Hello, Internet people. Welcome to another episode of Just Genealogy. Today, I want to talk to you about my ancestor, Isaac Kingman, and the fun I had in determining his date of death. Isaac is a Revolutionary War soldier, and we'll take it from there. We'll talk about a few pieces that I actually will talk about later on in other episodes as I do deep dives into those things. But these are things that you ought to know a little bit about before we get down into Isaac Kingman himself. So the records that we're gonna be dealing with today are the records of the National Archives. They are by far my favorite records to deal with, the records of the National Archives, especially those that relate to treasury records, which is probably one of my favorite, favorite, favorite record groups in the National Archives, largely because they are so untouched by other people. Um, in fact, I know some people that actually dislike these records very much because they're so difficult to use. But anyway, I helped create a revised finding aid to these back in 1997. That's how old I am. And uh, I, uh, I love what I can find in treasury records. So we're gonna talk about a couple of series of records that exist in treasury records. They're in the records of the third auditor and the third auditor dealt with uh, military pensions uh, for the most part, uh, because largely they were part of the War Department and then part of the Interior Department after 1894. But we're going to be talking about Revolutionary War. And these specifically are entry number 721. Now, 721 deals with settled accounts of pension agents. And they're filed by state and then by agency. Uh, they're 4,712 boxes. They're located in Washington, DC. Uh, they also include in the end of the series, army pensions from 1818 to 1864 and Navy pensions from 1818 to 19, 1894. So, and they're in boxes. And here we see, this is one, this just happens to be one of a, a photo I have in my collection, uh, third auditor, land files and miscellaneous divisions, sell accounts of pension agents, from 1813 to 1899. And these deal with the Nashville, Tennessee agency. And this box specifically deals with those uh, payment vouchers from 1834 in the first and second quarter. Now, the joy of this is you can only request these by uh, agency and by year. Uh, so you end up with a box of records. and. Um, I've had more fun with that because not only do I get to see the record I'm looking for, uh, but I also get to see other records. And I've actually, once upon a time, while looking for somebody in the Vincennes agency, found my own ancestor in the same box. And that was an interesting time. I think I cried. So these individual payment vouchers that are found in these boxes, there are ledgers associated with them. And those ledgers were microfilmed as T718, um, and they deal with the period of 1818 to 1872, uh, meaning from the Continental Line Act uh, through the widows and orphans. So of uh, um, other wars, uh, and also um, they, these, so what we have are pension office ledgers that represent these pay payments these payment vouchers that are in these boxes that I've been talking about. They're actually uh, originally a microfilm T718, ledgers of payments, 1818 to 1872. And they are in fact on Ancestry. So if you type into the card catalog, and I always recommend that you type into the card catalog before you do anything, 1818 to 1817, that will take you to these results for the guy I'm looking for, Isaac Kingman. So when we look at that, this is what the ledger looks like. Now I'll do a deep dive on ledgers at some point in the future, uh, probably when I get enough requests to do it. Uh, you don't really have to understand a whole bunch about this ledger at this point in order to get to what we're dealing with today. Uh, I have created a pension ledger finding aid also um, so to help you uh, learn how to deal with these pension ledgers, uh, and that's called Understanding Revolutionary War and Invalid Pension Ledgers. Uh, 
1818 to 1872. Uh, this book and the uh, 217 book, uh, I'll put a code down in the down below uh, that will allow you to buy them at a discount uh, at heritagebooks.com since uh, heritagebooks.com is actually sponsoring this conversation today. Uh, this book will also have further information on uh, a step-by-step -step process for getting to what we're talking about today if you need to review it on a piece of paper rather than on a screen. So seven, entry 721, you'll remember uh, a few minutes ago I told you those were the payment vouchers. Well, in the 1960s, the archivists uh, determined to separate the last or final payment found uh, from those payment vouchers, and they created entry 722, the selected final payment vouchers. Now, these are both last and final payments, and basically they went looking for them and they pulled them out. Now, there's an index to those final payment vouchers found on fold three. And let's talk about those. Let's take a sample of those that covered most of the bases. Um, this is Hedgeman Triplett. He's a Revolutionary War soldier from Kentucky. He got a pension under the Act of 1832, and his date of last payment was in the second quarter of 1837. And there's an asterisk up on the top there in the upper left-hand corner. That means that they were able to find his final payment. That asterisk means they were able to find his final payment. It's important to remember that. So what's a last payment? The last payment is the last time that the pension office actually paid a pensioner, the last time they signed. And there are reasons for a last payment. Uh, the pensioner may have moved to a different pension office, and it was the last time that they saw him at that pension office. The pensioner may have died and no one came in to pick up his final payment. No heir came in to pick up his final payment. Or the pensioner just is rich now and doesn't need the hassle of a pension anymore. But here's another card, and this is rare. Normally these slips of paper cards don't exist for uh, but maybe one per person. But I think because Hedgeman's name was sort of befuddled by the pension ledger, there's a big spot of ink in the center of it um, over his name that they created another one. And But this was 1832, uh, date of payment first quarter of 1839, but Hedgeman died 22 September, 1837 according to that pension ledger. So this is a final payment. Now, final payment is what you're really looking for because final payments include generally heirs. Now, notice on this card, there is no asterisk in the upper left-hand corner. I'm really not gonna talk about that today, but that asterisk means you've gotta do a few other things to um, find this specific payment. Uh, generally, it relates to uh, settled accounts of 6 April, 1838. But what's the final payment? That's when heirs come in and get the money from the date of last payment to the date of death. Um, and it, it may occur decades after uh, the pensioners died. Um, it's just fun. So here's Isaac Kingman, the guy I care about today. Yeah, I think he's my fifth or sixth great grandfather. Um, he, uh, he may be my fourth. I just really haven't looked at it because I honestly don't care what number he is. He's an ancestor of mine. And this is his pension jacket. And his pension jacket tells me that he served from Massachusetts. Now, his final payment may not be in Massachusetts because obviously Hedgeman Triplett didn't serve from Kentucky. Um, he served from Virginia. Um, but so Massachusetts for Isaac Kingman, his widow isn't identified there. And we know that he got a pension because there's an S there. That S stands for survivor. Uh, it could have been a W if there was a widow. It could have been an R if, there was, if the pension was rejected. These envelopes that these are in can contain more than one pension. So if Isaac Kingman's widow was identified as a pensioner on this envelope, then both Isaac Kingman's and his widow's pension would be inside this envelope and you would want to separate them. By the way, all the Revolutionary War pensions are on fold three. Uh, at least those of the, that were microfilmed anyway. And uh, so we know from this that uh, whoever Isaac Kingman's widow is, she didn't get a pension. In examining the pension, 
uh, we learn that Isaac Kingman's widow is not identified, except that she is the sister of Luke Packard. So we have some idea that, um, that Isaac Kingman's wife, widow, that her maiden name is Packard. So this is the actual pension jacket, which is inside this envelope. This is a trifold and in it, on it, you um, can see this down at the, let me blow it up a little bit, down in the bottom left-hand corner, the D, NOV 11, 1839. That tells me that Isaac Kingman died on November 11th, 1839. However, there's nothing in the pension that proves that. So uh, my goal today is to prove that he actually died on the 11th of November, 1839. So when I look at that ledger that exists, on ancestry, I find Isaac Kingman on a ledger from the Act of 1832 uh, for Massachusetts. Let me blow up Isaac Kingman a little bit so you can see his name there. And attached to the end of the string of numbers, which are ones, twos, threes, and fours, they stand for quarters uh, of payment, we see that he died 11 November 1839, and he was paid first quarter of 1840. So here we have a, another place that tells us, this is now the third place that tells us that he died the 11th of November, 1839. But these are all derivative sources. None of these is an original source. The, uh, the 11 November, 1839 on the jacket uh, came from something. The 11 November, 1839, on the pension ledger came from something. The 11 November 1839 on the pensions, on the index slip, the last and final payment slip did come from this source right here, um, from this pension ledger. And that's where that information came from. So we know at least where one of the numbers came from, but we don't know uh, exactly where the actual date of death is. So let's go look at Isaac Kingman's final payment or last payment uh, index card on fold three. So what we find on fold three, we find Isaac Kingman. We find that the archives was successful in locating a final payment for him. That's what this asterisk means. Agency is Massachusetts. That matches what's on the pension, although it could be somewhere else because he may have moved after he served. We know it's active 1832. Uh, we know this from the ledger that his payment begins in 1831 because the act of 1832 was backdated to March of 1831, but that's just a nuance. We know that he was paid in the first quarter, 1840 from the ledger. And we know his date of death of 11 November, 1839 comes from the ledger. So here are the, the, the final wrap up of those three places where we know what his date of death is, but we don't have the proof of it. We just have it written down somewhere. So we know from a final payment that we should be identifying heirs uh, from the payment voucher. So if we go to the archives and ask for the final payment for Isaac Kingman from the Act of 1832, um, we get this uh, little trifold envelope. Uh, and in it is a pension claim from Content Kingman. So we now know the first name of Isaac Kingman's wife, Content Kingman, uh, which means that because she is the brother of Luke Packard, according to the pension, Content Packard is the wife of Isaac Kingman. We also notice on this claim that there are two witnesses, uh, Elephant Packard, well, that must be a relative, uh, Betsy Kingman, that must be a relative, um, so these are people that we're going to want to research. And then there's a receipt. What would happen is either the pensioner or someone with their power of attorney would go to a bank that was a pension office, a pension agency. Bankers tended to be the pension agents because they had safes. So here we have a guy by the name of Joseph Orcutt who um, is picking up the pension payment, that, that final payment for Isaac Kingman to give to content. So he has this, he has a copy of this receipt 
There's two copies made. One is kept with the payment voucher file, and that payment voucher file will be forwarded quarterly to the treasury. That's how it ended up in entry 722 or 721, depending on what payment voucher it is. And then he, Joseph got a copy of the receipt himself. Notice the word duplicate receipts above Joseph's name. So one was taken back home with him uh, to content Kingman uh, to demonstrate how much money she should be paid for his final payment. So we also want to research who Joseph Orcutt is, someone she trusts to go and get the pension payment. Then also in that jacket, we see that there's a document filed by the uh, town clerk for Goshen, Massachusetts, where he says in this document that Isaac Kingman died on the 11th day of November, 1839. So this is the original document that demonstrates what his date of death was the document received by the treasury so that they could annotate the ledger to say that he was dead, so that they could annotate the Revolutionary War pension so that they could say he was dead, that eventually the archive staff in the 1960s would annotate a slip of paper to say that he was dead. This is the original record. So I'm always gonna to talk to you about people who are doing genealogy and people who are genealogists. So, a genealogist wants to track down this piece of paper. A person doing genealogy just might be content with any of the three places that we found the date of death. So what did we learn from our research today, our dive into Isaac Kingman? We did learn that his wife's name was Content. And by correlating it with his pension, we know that she was Content Packard. We learned of three other people to research. One of them will turn out to be her brother. One of them will turn out to be her daughter. And Joseph will, is near kin in that content Kingman's mother's maiden name was Orcutt. So he's probably a nephew. But more importantly, we were successful in finding the actual proof of death, the document, the original document that proves that he died on 11 November, 1839 in Goshen, Massachusetts. Thank you all for joining me today. Uh, I welcome your comments in the bottom. I welcome the opportunity to talk to you about other subjects. If you give me some idea about what you would like me to talk about, um, I will be happy to uh, entertain that opportunity if I can. Uh, this, uh, a reminder that this talk was brought to you by uh, Heritage Books, uh, which can be found at heritagebooks.com. And I'll put a discount code in the bottom that will allow you uh, to get a 10% discount on either of the two books that I talked about today. Uh, thank you very much for joining me today, and I look forward to our next chat.